All right, y'all, we're back. Still working on this panel truck here. We're, uh, we got a few things left to do before we can take it and go cruising, and I'm super excited about that. Seats ready to be picked up at the upholstery shop. All the brakes are ready to be pumped and, and bled. So right now we're adding some shocks to this sucker. And then we're gonna do a few things up there on that. But right now, right now we're working on the shocks. Let's uh let's get going on those. All right, here's what we got. You guys saw the dropped and filled 32 axle. We ended up putting these lower shock mounts on here with the chrome spring hanger there and we're just using some uh painted pete and jake shocks uh 1084s so we're gonna have to let's see Ugh. we're gonna have to mount this i've got my line marked up here on top so that's half travel so at right height I want it to be right there so that I have two and a half inches up, two and a half inches down. So that'll give me plenty. So now I need to uh, rework an F1 shock mount. Here's the difference between an F1 and a D100 shock. This is F1 on the right, 48 to 52. This is a D100 shock which is uh i'm not exactly sure on the years they used those i know they used them in 48 49 and 50 possibly other years but uh there's the difference right there you can see this one has a tab on it a flat tab instead of a kind of a you know what do you call that a boss <laughs> and you can see that this they're shorter if you line up those top two you can see how much shorter it is so Depending on that, your application, yeah, uh, you could use either one. If you're going to cut it down, it doesn't matter. You can get either one and chop them down like I did. So there you go. There's those A little little education. So when you're out at the salvage yard and you're looking for some shock mounts, you can also look at the Dodge trucks, the old job rated job uh, Dodge trucks. So yeah, the D100, uh, probably the D. What's the next one? Maybe a D150. I'm not exactly sure on what the three-quarter ton is, but it, it would possibly have those as well. So you'll want to keep an eye out for a D100 or D150 job-rated Dodge trucks or the 48 to 52 F1 pickups if you want to get some shock mounts. So here's what we're using. These are, I think, some aftermarket shock mounts that I picked up somewhere, but they're forged just like the, just like the factory F1 shock mounts. F1 shock mounts. 48 to 52 Ford and they also had some that were very similar to these on D 100s The only difference is this is a flat pad instead of a circular mount So these right here are what most everyone uses or should use on hot rods these are these <laughs> They work really great and you can just heat and bend them around and manipulate them any way you want uh, I've even used these on airbag type vehicles in the front to get away from those stupid shock mounts that everybody uses. But anyway, we're going to use these. These uh, are regular um, half inch eye for the rubber on the top of the shock. So we've got to get this. And we're going to use this front shock hole. And we're going to turn it, angle it just a little bit before we can get that in there. But we've got to get this part to go in there like that. So I've already started and got a little bit of an idea on what I want to do. It's going to mount flat to the frame. And it needs to be pulled out to where it can match that shock over there. So... I'm going to heat this sucker up and get it bent out so that I can get it kind of in a place. I'm going to have to end up probably 
shortening this and taking a chunk out and and straightening this out because it's going to be mounted almost well not quite like that but about like that and see that's not going to work so it needs to be more like that actually up a little bit so we'll have to straighten this top bend out also so let's get the fire going let's heat this sucker right here up and let's get her bent and then we can check it in there Caution, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Not really, but... Whoa, see? There we go. That got all the hair on my hand. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just going to heat this sucker up red hot right here in front of that top mount. And then we're going to ease it over off of that frame rail so that we can try to get it in the right area where it needs to go for that shot. I'm going to take a little bit to heat this up because it's pretty thick. Shouldn't be too bad though. Keep it on there and keep heating up the same spot. Come on, baby, let's go. We got all month. There we go. Maybe a little bit. that cool down turn the gas off let that cool down a little bit and see if we can uh, put that up on there we're gonna have to drill another hole we're utilizing uh, one of the original fluid shock holes and then we're gonna drill another one so we'll have to get that up there so we can mark it all right we'll let that cool we'll be back I decided to bend the other one. Might as well. That one's done. So we'll get this other one heated up and bent. I figured it might be easier to follow along with each one of them instead of building one and then trying to figure out exactly what I did in my head and what order. So I think this might be a little bit easier. Got the gas turned up a little higher now. See if this will heat up a little better. That's hard. warm yeah that looks pretty good it's hot hot sucker buster right there all right let's uh throw this one the cooler one not as hot on the frame let's see what hits that thing is still hot y'all 
Yeah, that's a lot closer. It's closer to where we want to be at. Now what we need to do is we need to straighten this bend right here out. That way we can get it shortened down. Because we'll have to get it to flow right into that shock right there. Ooh, that's hot. Alright, now somehow we need to be able to stretch that out. And I'm not sure how I want to tackle that. I guess I'll just put it in here like this. Yeah, it's hot. And that's going to take a little bit. I've got a piece of pipe here that we can take and put on it. We're going to have to stretch that, straighten that out. I bet probably a, at a 45 degree. That's what I'm thinking. Fire in the hole. We're going to try to angle this about like that. See if we can get it to uh, straighten out more. I think that'll put me at about where I need to be on the for the angle. Get a little bit more. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's gonna work because I noticed that shock is actually, it's not up and down like this, it's actually laid back a little bit so the eyelet's gonna be pointed kind of up. And that's pointed up now, which is good. Shoo, that sucker's hot. Go cool it off and I'll cool the other one off in the water outside and we'll, uh, Get a, get a good look at it. Okay, I think from now on, I'm gonna try to heat it. Heat it straight instead of at an angle. So I've got just a little bit of twist. You can see it. You can see it right. Well, you can see it right there in the bottom actually. You can see where that forged line where they cleaned off the slag is twisted. So just to keep from, not that it's going to matter because I'm going to hit it with a flap disc and you're never going to see that line again. It's going to go away to be with Jesus. So, but I think that will keep me kind of lined up if I line it up, you know, like this and then just push up instead of trying to push at an angle because I actually just twisted it a little bit. But no big deal. We'll keep going. Let's uh let's see what that looks like now. Okay, that's actually not too bad because I can cut a section out of there and turn it a little bit to where it fits that. So if you look here at this line, it's almost, well, it will be if I make it like that, it is parallel with the frame rail. So, when we come over here, when we come over here and look at this, we can see that it's not. So, I need to twist it. I need to twist it back in line with those two bolts back over there. This is always just trial and error on these. I mean, unless you're just buy something off the shelf. And I don't want to do that. I want to build stuff.
just moving it ever so slightly, just, just putting a little pressure on it and allowing it to move as it gets heated up. Not getting crazy. Whew, there we go. That was good. Bubble bul up around. Yeah, that looks better. Now you can see that the angle of the shock eye, or the whatever you want to call it, is now lined up here with this mounting, just like going down the frame rail. So, boogered it up a little bit right in there. No big deal. Uh, once the flap disc hits that and has a date with it, it'll be all slicked up and you won't even be able to tell. It'll look like a factory made one. Let's try it on the frame. I know. Back and forth, back and forth. Let's move that a little closer to us. There we go. Yeah. Still. Let's see, where's that at again? That's back here pointed up. Yeah. I think we're pretty good. I think we just need to take a section out of there. Maybe, maybe bend it out a little more. Heck, we're pretty darn close. I think what we need to do is we need to take a section out of that, like, probably that much anyway, and spot it back in there and weld it up and then see what it looks like. So... That one's still hot. Shoot, that one right there is hot. Don't touch that one, y'all. Dang, I forgot I didn't cool that one off. It's just naturally, naturally cooling. So you can see the difference now. We just need to angle that one up a little bit more. Actually, we just need to angle this one up more. Pull it down, pull it back. I don't know. Guessing. Let's see what we can do here. Well, we've got this one, so that's good. So we can take that, set it right on top, and we can get it pulled back and line it up with that one. So that'll be good. This is a little, a little harder to do. I think that looks pretty good. Y'all might be able to see it pretty good right there, but I think that'll work. All right, we got this arm ready to go. It's all cooled off now. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark the holes so I can get it mounted up and then we'll end up, we have to move this top part. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and then I can adjust the top part to meet the shock. So we'll just cut, I'll show you what we're gonna do here on this here video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make one cut across here and then I'll adjust this top piece until I get to the right length to that, that bottom part for it when it's mounted to the frame rail, if that makes sense. All right, guys, I screwed up. You see that hole? It's just too low. I couldn't get a nut on it, so I ended up marking that arc. I redrilled, started to redrill, and I thought, I better check that distance that was off, so I moved over onto the arc there where I scratched it. So, just is what it is. Just keep moving forward. We got our pilot hole drilled. We're fixing to drill that sucker out. And we can get that bolted up on there. Like that. And uh, cut that. So you see where we're at right now. It's off a little bit. There's where that needs to go. Kind of hard to
to see, but. So now, now that I've got my holes mounted, they're good. I'm gonna cut this sucker off right here. And then I can bolt that up flat and I can manipulate this to sit in there and work with that. There you go. Let's go bolt that up and let's figure out where we need to be at on that. So it's gonna go something like that. All right, now that we've got it split apart and we've got that part mounted, now we can figure out where that needs to be. And that's actually pretty close right there. So we can trim. We need to look, we need to back out on the front and make sure we got to have clearance here on this brace and we need to have clearance for this steering hoop right here so that when it turns and swivels back and forth that it won't hit it and that actually is pretty close so it looks like I might might need to bend it back in to see it from the front that okay that actually looks pretty good up and down it's gonna swivel like that so it's never gonna get any closer to that brace than where it's at yeah so let's uh let's figure out How much we need to cut off there? Let me get my sharpie here. So I think we'll start by cutting about that much off. I think that that will work. Okay, let's try that. looking pretty close I would probably grind some off of that to get a little bit better better angle in there and that's gonna be man that looks see from the front here that don't look bad at all okay you guys watch it tell me how close it gets close is that oh man we got plenty of space yeah we got plenty we can get our fingers in there not the light off so that looks pretty darn good and then we can just make the other one match it I'll grind that and shape it a little bit so that it'll fit up on there a little better There we go. I think that'll help a little bit. And then we'll tack it. We'll get the welder out and we'll get it up there and get it tacked. And we can slick that all up. Try it again. There we go. See, we put that little angle on there. Now I can see right where it needs to go. So that's still got plenty of space there. And that's what we wanted. Oh, 
turned it on. All right, we got her out. Let's see what we ended up with. Let's come around here on this other side. All right. There's what we ended up with right there. So we'll pop a tack on that part right there. And then we'll clamp that down. And we'll put a little something underneath that to keep it from moving. And we'll burn that sucker in. We got her all slicked up, good to go. Got the angle right, see the angle of the dangle there? So I think we're good to go. Okay, there we go, we are right on the money. We are good to go. That looks really good. Let's get you guys up in here, see if you can see it a little better, put this light on it. There you go. That looks really good. Got plenty of space in there between the brace and the shock. Got plenty of space here between the steering hoop and the shock. We got we can bolt it up there. We can bolt it up there. It's bolted to the frame. Good to go. All right, now we got to make the other one look like that one. <laughs> Let's do it. I grabbed a couple pieces of all thread and I didn't have a bolt long enough to go through both of these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this all thread in here to bolt these two together that way I can make sure I keep them on the same the same angle and get them lined up perfectly once I get this one cut and tacked together I won't burn it in and make it match that one perfectly yet until I go check it on the frame. So I want to check it on the frame before I burn that completely in. If it works on the other side, which there shouldn't be any reason because there's no steering hoop and the, the uh, fender brace is exactly the same. So as long as it works on the other side I'll burn it in. But if it doesn't, I have to tweak it a little bit one way or another, no big deal. I can do that before I burn it completely in. So Let's get those two bolted up. Look at that. That's pretty close. Looks like I need to go in a little bit more. Just go ahead and burn it in. It was perfect. It wasn't in the way. Of, nothing was in the way, so nothing's going to hit, so that's real good. We can just go ahead and lay the bead to this sucker. I'm gonna go give this one a bath and then we'll come back in and we'll let it cool just a little bit more and we'll shape this sucker up like that one. We'll get them painted, drop them on, we'll be good to go. All right, I got her pretty close, but I'm gonna swap to another, a new flat disc. Nothing wrong with this one. I just want a flatter surface on there. That way I can really smooth those both of those out really nice. And if I get a new one, it's gonna give me that flat surface that I can really clean that up and make it look really nice. Okay, they both went in, so that's good. All right, come on right here, you guys. Let's see if you can see this. So there you go. That one's in. A little dark. 
And then let's see. Let me shine some light on it. There you go. Now you can see it. Looks pretty darn good. Plenty of space. Just need to get those nuts now. So Awesome. Now we can get those two suckers painted up with the Dupla color engine paint that I love. I like using it. Matter of fact, a little shout out. I need a sponsorship, Dupla color, just in case. So you know, I use this all the time and I love it. This is great stuff. Anyway, we'll uh, get those painted up real quick. Need to knock that off. And then we'll, uh, I'll probably run and go get some bolts for these. And then we can get them mounted up for the last time. And yes, Duplicolor Primer too. <laughs> Engine Primer. Love this stuff. Let's see. Washers too, the two lower washers. I need two more upper washers. We'll get those painted as well. Voila! Good to go. Man, we're almost there. We are cooking. Just need to get a couple more uh, wrenches and I can tighten those up. There you go, guys. From that to that, that's how much it got manipulated. You see those, these are straight up and down. And now that one's got a little offset to it, a little kick out. So, looking good. Let's get her mounted up. Okay, let's take a consensus here. What do you guys think? The cup of the washer for the shock on the towards the bushing or turned out away from the bushing? I see them both ways. I like the way they look cupped against the bushing myself. That's my personal preference. So that's how I'm doing these. here there you go guys what do you think looks pretty good doesn't it we got the lower lower mount tightened up upper mounts tightened up they're bolted to the frame they're at the right angle man plenty of clearance what do you think there you go so anyway hope that helps you guys out like share and subscribe check you later thanks for watching